Hello. Hi. Yeah. That was a good yeah. Good intro. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to the VGHD podcast, a podcast where we talk about all of the latest news in the gaming industry. Um, I'm 3-Bit, followed by the amazing panelists. We have some great topics for today, but first, let's get a word from our sponsor. Thanks, other 3-Bit. You ever wonder how I make such awesome Netflix videos right here on the VGHD set? Well, there is a secret. It's because I taste the 4-Bit energy drink. I can't be 3-Bit without my 4. This product does not actually exist. If it does exist, you can't have it because you're not 3-Bit. Actually, I changed my mind. It does exist. You subscribe to the video game HD channel on 3-Bit signing off. Have a good one. All right. 4-Bit drink. All that good stuff. Oh, um, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so, it tastes like sweat. <laughs> it tastes... It tastes I, I sort of try to imagine what it would taste like. I'm thinking it's like a, a mixture. Uh, if you mix Coca-Cola with, uh, with like... Um, uh, monster drink. What do you mean a four loco? Is is that that that's a thing? Yeah, th- there's a drink called four loco. You never heard of it? You're making it I up. Mean, You're making it I, up. I am not. I'm not making this up. I'll pull it up right now. Uh, he's making it up. That's okay though. Yeah, it's a four loco drink. It's uh. Four like the number, like the number F O U R F O U R. Four local. Are you being serious? Are you being serious? Are you being serious? I am serious. I just googled it. Four local. Have you had it, Will? I haven't, but I've seen it. I know of it. I've had I've had both versions of it. The old version that had all the crazy stuff in it, and I tell you what. I got drunk off of that, and the next morning, I've never played a better game of football in my entire life. <laughs> so, are, are you telling me that my drink is unoriginal? Yes. Is that what, <laughs> is that what you're telling me? Yes, it's, uh, it's exactly. Yes. Oh, dang. Like, we thought it was cute as a parody, but we didn't think you'd take it too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. All the shots. That's okay. Well, we have uh, our introductions, so we've First, we have Insane Kicks. He is a content creator and animator, does cool stuff with the military. Insane Kicks, how are you doing today and what have you been playing? I have been doing absolutely... Uh, I've been alright. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, it works stressful. It's fun, but it's stressful. You get put on some different jobs that, that you sometimes don't know how to work, how to approach it. But <laughs> yeah. on top of that, school's fun. 10 page papers did oh, a cool animatic i posted up on on uh instagram if y'all want to watch that it's also on my facebook too but um games i've been playing ghost of tsushima multiplayer absolutely phenomenal Ooh. and y'all should definitely definitely play. it's a 10 out of 10 it, it's it's what it's what destiny should be for multiplayer like <laughs> like um in destiny you do like uh dungeons and um or, they're not called dungeons they're called uh strikes but you do strike missions and then you got nightfalls and then you got uh your raids ghost of tsushima has the same exact thing you have these just story missions you don't have like the open world part of it except aside from the story mission um or, like the main story mission um and then you have this multiplayer where you just go and do these different like survival modes a story mode a nightmare mode and then you got raids and I haven't done the raids yet because I haven't had a lot of time with school. But ten out of ten, That's, amazing. It sounds really good. Um, I haven't even played the. It you know if I keep my PS5, I think I'll just try it on there because it's it's like sixty frames on Ghosts, right? For PS5, I think. Sixty frames. Per I think it is. Yeah. It's pretty cool. All right. Next up, we have. Worse, he is an artist, animator, a mystery to most. Loves video games, and one of the starting hosts of the VGHD podcast. How are you today, and what have you been playing? I'm doing okay. Uh, I've been playing uh, since that Halloween. Everything got canceled on me. 
and I was just kind of hanging around just looking after my brother's dogs, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go play some video games. So I started off with something simple and short, which was uh, Little Nightmares. It's a cute little uh, Tim Burton-esque uh, horror game. Uh, it's all right. Like, there's there's some creepy moments in there, but maybe it's just because I saw, like, a lot of the trailers for it, and I kind of, like, got an idea of, like, most of the enemy designs and shit like that. But, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed the DC... The, the DLC a lot more than the main game, but overall it's a fun little game. I give it like a little 7 out of 10. The sequel looks amazing though, so I cannot wait to get into that. And after that, I started playing uh, Flipping Death. I actually got that on a discount from the PlayStation uh, Halloween sale. And mm. uh, I it's made by the same guys that did Stick It to the Man, which is one of my personal favorite uh indie games on the PlayStation 4. It was for free on, like, the PlayStation Plus a while back. But, uh... Anyway, uh... Flipping Death is also fun. Uh, I think I still like Stick It to the Man more, but I do like the fact that it's kind of going back to that whole, uh... point-and-click puzzle adventure game and the characters and humor are just so, like, weird and charming that it's just kind of hard to put down like even it even if some jokes aren't as funny as like stick it to the man and i'm not sure if maybe it's because i drank a lot or something <laughs> but still have a lot of fun with this and if you're someone who likes uh the tim schaefer uh double fine game style with like that weird kind of humor and character uh monkey island or just classic old point and click games uh i recommend both uh stick it to the man and flipping death so far so that's the games i've been playing and uh depending on how things are gonna go uh i may do a new game but i will not tell you because i need to keep my mysterious thing in mind <laughs> yeah uh so you guys both been playing pre some pretty interesting games i've been playing yakuza still um i am playing kiwami 2 I started. I was starting to play Yakuza Zero, but I want to know what's what happened next because I, I the first game I played was Kiwami, the first one, and I was going to go back. So it's, I'm in this weird Star Wars sort of situation where do I play the prequels or do I play the sequels? You know, yeah. a friend of mine actually told me because I was asking them the same question: like, should I just start off with Kiwami One and then like play the main games and go back to Zero? And they actually said that Zero was so good that it kind of it acts as like a uh, entry point to newcomers. That is just kind of a good way to kind of go into it. It's kind of it's done good to the point where it almost feels like a uh, like it always was there instead of like a game a prequel that was made years after the fact so mm. that's what i'm gonna probably be doing so yeah i wish i wish i started with yakuza zero and then sort of branched out to the other ones um but it, it's all it's all dandy it's all good You're um get ready for uh like a dragon yes yes i'm real i'm actually really excited for that game I'm, I'm like becoming a fan of yakuza it's just like such a ridiculous game it has like a perfect amount of like serious and quirky and everything i love about anime and, and japanese culture it, it has it so um i'm totally for it. and i i really want to hear what you think about it um when you eventually get up to uh kiwami or even when you finish yakuza zero i want to hear your your thoughts on it oh yeah i'm gonna go all out on yakuza zero but i won't say how you'll have to find out how i'm gonna go all out on that it's part of the mystery. <laughs> Alright, so we have some uh, amazing topics to go through today. The first one is our impressions of the new consoles. Um, so gaming media outlets got a hold of these new systems, and if we're referring to IGN, they gave it um, they gave both systems a, an 8 rating. And um, this is what they had to say for both of these systems. IGN Gave it an 8 stating that the PS5 lacks in subtlety and makes up for in potential thanks to its rapid SSD and remarkable DualSense controller. And then they uh, gave Series X also an 8 with their view being that Xbox Series X is a quiet, compact, laser targeted game machine that shouldn't make 4K 60 
FPS gaming the wonderful new norm, but it currently lacks must-play games. Um, so what are both of your thoughts on the new consoles? Um, I want to see what you guys think about it. Let's go to Insane Kicks. What do you, what do you think about it? I, like I said, or I, like I said, off camera, um, <laughs> I've, I've seen a few reviews and I've, uh, I've heard nothing but good things about both of them. Yeah. Like some of them have like some low, uh, um, things of memory. Cause I think both systems are, have like a big amount of bloat, not bloatware. That's what they call it, computers. Um, uh just uh the operating systems they it takes up a lot on both sides but aside from that like i've heard nothing about good things from both systems so i'm happy for that that's actually pretty good hopefully we'll see better games come from it yeah for sure and uh worse what do you what do you think about it what do you think about it uh, i'll get to my thoughts <laughs> oh I'll, I, I know what he's gonna say but uh this is just kind of what i expected in all honesty uh the playstation 5 is uh very new and experimental and uh the xbox one series x is like uh just compacting just it's pretty much covering everything about the xbox in of itself it's just sort of like a uh xbox starter kit where you can just get everything you want on it but mm -hmm. uh Unfortunately, as I'm just kind of looking at the reviews and just kind of just from what I've been saying for months on end, uh, like obviously we're going to be getting them, but there isn't really anything right now that's screaming out to us as far mm -hmm. as uh, games or features goes. Like uh, the Xbox One Series X is obviously very good for like uh, just being able to play everything that an Xbox is capable of and just being able to quick resume, basically go through several applications and just being an overall very beefy, powerful machine. However, mm -hmm. the PlayStation 5 does have some new innovations like the DualSense controller, which a lot of people have been liking a lot from, from what I've been hearing and reading. Mm -hmm. And the exclusives have also been a thing to where uh, people are kind of gravitating towards more of that. I've been hearing that Spider-Man Miles Morales has gotten good scores, yeah. which... Um, you know, it'd, it'd be nice if we could play the game, but uh, okay. The one thing that I kind of find weird is that there are reviews for consoles in general. Like, I'd get it if it was, like, at the end of a console's life cycle. Because mm -hmm. you get to look back at, like, the start of it and then the end of it. But I feel like it's a little bit too premature to basically just... I'm going to give you the review of this console that just came out like three minutes ago. It's shit. There's no games on it because the games haven't come out yet. And it's only been one day since it's come out. I hate it. <laughs> it's slapping the console right there. So I just, again, like a first impression's fine, but honestly, it's just, uh, it's kind of reaffirming what I kind of believed in. And the fact that uh, while there's some interesting things going on, there's not really enough of a, uh, need to go out to get them right away obviously like due to some recent events i'm gonna probably celebrate and splurge if i wanted to but for now this is just kind of looking like a uh just wait and see what'll happen next because uh especially the xbox one series x which has like um no exclusive games at the moment mm -hmm. like their biggest flagship title launch launch title was uh halo infinite and we've got a lot of shit about that oh, that we've been talking to the side. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but that's just stuff like that. And like, you could say like, oh, well the PlayStation 5 has got this, but then there's also the uh, 80 buck, uh, well, $70 game prices for a lot of it. So I don't know. It's just, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm still waiting for the uh, thing to basically make me go f get excited about the new consoles because right now it's just a lot of quality of life features rather than anything that feels next generation. And I feel like we've kind of peaked at this point. So, 3-bit, how do you like the Xbox? <laughs> All right, so, so something you said um, in the beginning where you were talking about uh, reviewing early, I thought that was really interesting because... For the most part, consoles over time evolves like crazy, right? In the, in the beginning of generations and the end of generations, they're very different. Um, but you know, if someone's first getting a product, it, may, it makes sense. And also, it's, it's 
like I don't usually look up product reviews, which is interesting, uh, unless it's like a, I guess a TV. If I'm about to buy a TV, um, usually it's like game reviews, right? Like game reviews are the more common thing. But I guess that that makes sense, you know, console generation every ten years. But essentially, what I think you, uh, about it, huh? I was gonna ask you, uh, did you read the IGN review about the Lenovo 4K 18-inch plasma screen TV? And one of the taglines I say, it makes you feel like you're watching TV. <laughs> no, I didn't see. <laughs> uh, good description, though. I lied. Head- headsets are the worst, though, with to find reviews for. I feel like everybody hears everything differently. Yeah. Like I end up going with like a really expense against against my own j- better judgment. I went I, for like an expensive headset, but I don't regret it because honestly, it's actually really cool. And like, it's not so much the the audio or the sound that's better. It's like the setup is so much better because I swap between like my computer and my uh and my PS4 like all the time, and it's way way easier. Off yeah, topic. yeah. I I'd, <laughs> I'd imagine like there's this different things that are hard to review like uh like a, i have a astro a40 headset and i A50. yeah the a50 uh, it was, <laughs> <laughs> um i i love it it's just the wires drive me crazy it's such it cool. has such good sound though does the a50s have like is it wireless it's got a hub it's got a hub that makes everything so much better and it's only two well one wire you could use with just usb but i have two i put the optical audio uh, drive i hate you anyways uh <laughs> <laughs> no um yes uh, back to to what i think about the reviews essentially um i agree with what ign sort of says about and what worse was saying where the xbox like really lacks in games i would say like in the the launch window um for a game i mean it it's like if you are pretty new to the xbox ecosystem and you haven't tried out gears 5 then cool that that game is great uh but in terms of like like halo infinite it really hurts it really hurts uh in it in terms of the games um but in, in terms of the features of what's on the console, like uh, smart delivery or or um, the quick resume feature and all that, that's going to really help future proof the console um, for and it's a lot a lot of quality of life improvements, like um, it, just things that are like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And you, you don't really realize how useful it is till you have it sort of thing. And there's a couple of those on the Series X, like how fast it is or easy it is to transfer your memory from the SSD to your hard drive. And what I was complaining about to worst on, uh, we were talking like on a PM was like in in the span of like one day, there was like all this all this news that came out for the PS5. Um, which wasn't brought up in any review that I saw. Like personally, I didn't see IGN bring it up. I didn't see like GameSpot bring it up. Um, and what I didn't see them bring up was the problem with the internal storage being really low, so 600, and the fact that you can't put that those games on it, an external a device. So you you can't even um, let's say you you want to plug in your hard drive or something like that like you can do i'm pretty sure you could do that with the ps4 you can't even move your games to another external device which to me is pretty big or the fact that the battery life is really low uh what i did look up Wait, what are you huh but um i thought you could though like move a ps4 games from a hard drive yeah i'm saying i'm four. saying i'm saying with the ps4 you can but the ps5 it's like you can't (laughs) and um that's what i'm talking about or or the battery life being so low but what what i did look up for the controller um because i'm like there's no way that the ps5 controller battery life is only two hours it's two hours if you play astro's playroom uh that completely makes more sense to me (laughs) now that I, i i researched i'm like that is such a low battery life astro playroom it like uses all the functions of the controller so it's it's like it's not going to be two hours. It's probably it's not as much as the PS4, but it's it's still, you know, not as bad as I thought it would be. Wait, 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 wait! Could, could you repeat that again? I want you to repeat those last few words right now. <laughs> what the the battery? The I don't even uh, know what I said. I don't know. 
I remember not what as I said. bad as it could have been. You yeah, you yeah. I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as it could. You think two hours would be great? Two hour battery? No, no, <laughs> okay. no, 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 no. That you jumped the gun too early. I jumped the gun too early. You jumped the gun too early. You just admitted it a couple of seconds ago. You just uh, did. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm admitting, I'm admitting, I'm like, because I had to research, I'm, because I'm like, there's no way that is just two hours, because that would be very bad, <laughs> so I had to go and research. So, so, so you like, researched it, and you found out more evidence. Yes, yes, I did. Microsoft at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone get As, a round of applause. Oh, man. Took a good gun. <laughs> too early. <laughs> too early. Someone in the comments. Um, yes, I I did jump the gun uh, too early in our PMs. I I I didn't say any of this publicly, but you know, in the PMs, uh, me and him was talking about. It. I'm like, what the heck? Um, and so so all this stuff um, about the storage and not being able to back it up unless you have PlayStation Plus or the loading times was the big thing for me even though it's okay playstation 5 has been telling the ssd and it's the most expensive this is what confuses me maybe you guys can jump on this um the ssd for the playstation 5 is probably the most expensive thing in the console it's the reason why they they downgraded their gpu and cpu so that way the speed is really fast um like the SSD in the console is is the technology in it is amazing, but what really, what confuses me is it's like it for the demonstrations at least what they've shown for the backwards compatibility games is the Series X is is making it so it's faster than the PlayStation Five. So like the one thing that people kept bringing up was the fact that the PlayStation Five yes it may lack in graphics or or whatever but it has good games and it has really powerful speeds um which ag again to argue for both of those cases yeah i mean i want to see what you guys like do you guys care about ssd do you care about buying a console that is faster or not like does power matter to you guys not really um Please. He's giving us a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see, like, I want to do you like shit? Do you do like it? How would you like, handle eating would... shit? No, I mean, I uh, mean, it's a fair okay. question. I, okay, so so none of you you two aren't car guys, are you? Right? Car yeah, guys. I, I'm kind of a car guy. Okay, so you know what a you know what a Mazda Miata is. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never so, seen oh, like it. All right, go, go not, ahead. Very, not very not very fast. Definitely not well. Definitely not fast at all. Definitely not very powerful, but it's damn near one of the funnest cars to drive. So um, I'm gonna have to go with. Yeah, I care about power because power is all. It's all about power, baby. Um, <laughs> um, it shouldn't. As, like I think Will said actually one of the, one of the things is like it's. <laughs> I'm quoting you, Will. I'm gonna steal your answer. <laughs> um, Darn. It's as long as long as it can run games well, um, and the games are good. I I don't think it really matters too much. Like the load times, like you you were worrying about the load times. They were I think at most a difference of thirty seconds, which is a long time. I mean, as animators, we know that thirty seconds is forever. So, um, I understand that, but I the SSDs, the price in SSDs, like have gone up, like. A lot. Like, I think the um, Series X SSD is like two hundred bucks, two hundred twenty. Yeah, but the but the thing is the thing is it's not it's like what a one terabyte or two terabyte I think it's it's um, like one only one. But the reason is because it's so much faster than other one terabyte um, hard drives that uh, comparison to like the ones you could find on like Amazon or something like that, which is why they cost so much. Like these things are. Like the top of the line SSDs on both systems, so I'm okay with it being that powerful on that end. Especially, you'll be able to upload and download like as long as your internet provider is good enough. Like you can get big gigabyte games downloaded like really quick. So I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it being as they are. 
Any worse? You, you had something? Well, I was going to say that as Insane Cake stole my answer, <laughs> and I'll remember that oh, later. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Prepared today. I will, I will steal one of your answers later. I just don't know when, but I'll be ready. I'll steal your thing. But anyway, um, from the differences that I saw, they seem to be, like, from a consumer standpoint, either minimal at best or not enough to really uh, register with people to be a big deal. Because mm -hmm. I actually kind of like some, some of the stuff up just to see, like, the differences between the loading times. Or actually, 3-bit provided the uh, differences between the loading times. And <laughs> they were off by, like, a couple of seconds here and there to the point that it just... It didn't really make much of a difference if someone was keeping, like, if someone were to keep both the times, it'd be like, okay, it's got to be specific here. But if someone's just popping in a game for the first time, being like, oh, well, you know, that's a, uh, I'm playing the game right away. Okay, cool. Uh, my, uh, my litmus test when it comes to terrible low times is Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Oh, so man. You're unless me back. the load times, yeah, so unless the load times are that bad. Uh, as long as it just doesn't interfere with the experience and as insane cakes stole my line just because he thinks he can take impersonate me uh it all really hey, depends on get the... me the mail by pigeon <laughs> oh hey look at me i'm insane cakes uh <laughs> you ever heard about cars i like the karate kid movie mr miyagi 5000 that's a car right there <laughs> steal everybody mess man. with karate kid and cobra kai <laughs> that stuff is awesome <laughs> anyway <laughs> um it all really depends on the games themselves and how good they are and uh if the experience can still be continued optimally and mm -hmm. As long as it's good enough, that's fine with me. Uh, obviously, I would want a uh, console that can operate and function perfectly. So that's, as long as it does that and I can have fun with the games, that's all right with me. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, how the game runs is, is very important. Um, and the quality of life, like features like on the console, like the OS and stuff, that's secondary, right? That's just, it's it's nice to have a good OS so that way you can get to your games quicker and all that um, but it, it is secondary at the end of it um, and with the reviews that, that that was my whole thing is like why did these big companies not even mention the, that fact like hey you have PlayStation 5 being faster and then they end it there but right now we're not seeing that um, in the reviews and I will be reviewing the PlayStation 5 and the Series X to the best of my ability. And I'll have He's these gonna two check me. shit on the PS5. Yeah. He's going to do it. I was going to say, we already predict those, those reviews. All right, so let me... So, let me let, I played the PS5, and the load times in it are one second ahead yeah. of the Xbox One Series X. So that's obviously an issue right there. Five out of ten. Controller, <laughs> it's not an Xbox. There's no Halo on here. Uh, I just don't know what the deal is. So, uh, obviously my Xbox One Series X has no new games on it, but it's got Game Pass, which I've already had for a while, and I get to play, uh, Halo and Minecraft on it, which, uh, Sony does not have. Yeah, I so, turned uh, on my I'm PlayStation... I'm on garbage. I turned on my PlayStation 5, and I didn't even see Halo, so, uh, 5 just, out of 10. Just, just Dark Side fill it. Just Dark Side fill it up, 3-bit. Dark Side fill it up. <laughs> But then he remembers yeah, that there's yeah, Miles man. Morales on it. I turned on the PlayStation 5. I couldn't find Game Pass. And... He, he'll see Miles Morales and be like, that's not Halo. This is a weird looking Halo. I don't know if Halo could swing on a web. Who's this rhino here? Is that Halo? Why is the PlayStation 5 logo not an Xbox logo? You know. But you know what? We're getting... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're getting way off topic. <laughs> So let's get back on topic. Uh, but yeah, that, that was initially my thoughts. I'm going to review it. Um, I'll have these two keep me in line because I love Microsoft. So I'll, I'll have these two look at my review. Um, we just we got a leash on there and we just zap like, them. It's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So our impressions, a little overview is we, we think it's cool. I really like the PlayStation 5 controller. Some of the, the new stuff, um, like the ability in the Series X, the quick resume, and then the PlayStation 5, what they're doing with the achievements is really cool. 
like um if you want to know how to get a certain achievement they actually have like videos for it so i hope that's supported a lot of the things that the playstation 5 is doing i hope developers support it um like the achievements and the rumble feature like the uh the what is it called the um, dual sensor the adaptive triggers yeah the, the adaptive triggers i hope developers support that in the long run because xbox controllers have it and nobody supported it for many years so i'm hoping this encourages people to support it because i think it's a really cool feature um because nobody bought an xbox one <laughs> <laughs> well, no one added I'm xbox not- one I think they'll do it for like a couple of months because it's the same thing with the PS4. Like the cool stuff they did with the PS4 uh, controller, like they had the little microphone in it, and you could do cool stuff. Because I remember one of the coolest things, one of the coolest things you could do with the PS4 early on was um, in Infamous Second Son when you're able to spray paint stuff on the wall. Oh, so yeah. this, so hold on, I, wait, I got something here. So <laughs> this is. This is like the coolest thing that they could have done for small, um, pointless like side side quest. Might be a little bit waste of a money uh, thing for the company, but it was the coolest thing to do for something as stupid as just spraying a, a thing on the wall. You had to turn the controller sideways and use the trigger like a spray can, and have to shake the controller. By oh. far one of the coolest things for such a menial task, and I wish they continued that with other games. Like just like press x to rock the baby or something or kick your legs in assassin's creed like you could have done something cool with that with the ps4 controller and they stopped doing that after like the first like couple hand months of games that came out of the ps4 and nobody did anything with it after yeah my whole point is is if if both companies do at least the triggers and maybe it'll be supported longer you know um other than that i don't know (laughs) um you know, um, I always wished my uh, PS4 controller was like the movie Her. <laughs> so you want to get in a relationship with well, your? Yeah, I was gonna say. I wanted to be just uh, just just a controller voiced by Scarlett Johansson, and then I just set it to the side when I turned the PS4 in rest mode, and I set it on the nightstand, and I say good night, I love you, and then it says like good night, I love you too, and that's how it works. It's like the movie Her. Why yes, Joaquin Phoenix is one of my favorite actors. Why yes, I did love the Joker. How could you tell? Yes, we're we living in 2020 right now. While well, we're living in 2020, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anything. This is a crazy year. I could see it. <laughs> God, why is my life? So. Yeah. All right. So, um, we went over that. Like, we could talk a little bit about Miles Morales. Uh, so it's getting pretty yeah, good. Play. Well, yeah. I mean, you guys seen gameplay and footage of it, right? If not, I'm moving on. I'm yeah. I'm keeping my eyes away just so that way I don't have to get spoiled because mm-hmm. the thing that I liked about so much about Spider-Man PS4 was that I had like no hope or interest. It's like, oh, okay, this looks fine, I guess. And once I played it, I cried at the end, and I'm like, oh my god, this is great. I didn't know. So, like he told me, I'm gonna possibly cry uh, at the end, and I'm like, huh, what are you talking about? And then it happened, and I was like, you jerk, and. uh and it it, it, it kind of happened. I just I just hope it's not written by the same people that did the DLC because I don't know what the fuck they were doing with that. I think I never played it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even play the like, DLC yet. Also, like like uh, I'd never seen um Indiana Jones four. I refuse. Listen, all right. This <laughs> is a this is a topic on in it itself. Okay. In <laughs> Indiana Jones. Indiana four, Jones 4 is four not is that not bad that of a bad. movie. Yes, that's what exactly that That's what I'm going to say. It's not that bad of a movie. We are <laughs> great for once. It's not that bad of a heard, movie. No, 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 no. Hold on. When I, heard, when I heard that you could survive a nuclear blast <laughs> by getting in a refrigerator It is and real. Aliens. You can do it. It is real aliens, life. Dude. No. Uh, have no, you tried? No. Aliens but, are real. But, but have you tried? Have you ever done it before? Have you ever done it? Yes. Three minutes, no, but it's, I refuse. You're just weak. Yeah, I do it no, every week. I will. To this day, I will never watch Indiana Jones four. Listen, well, that to me. Maybe like five. Or maybe I'll watch five. Lame. <laughs> you, Listen, you can't be a true fan. everybody I'm in watch the worst shit ever. Everybody in the comments, tell Insane Cakes to watch Indiana Jones four. They're gonna. 
like they're gonna say no. They're like, what the fuck is wrong with you two? <laughs> Look, see, good it's movie. A, see, see, it's it's a best thing. That's one. But lie. still, you're lying. <laughs> I thought it was decent. Okay, I, it was it, it it was a good movie. I enjoyed it. And, and, and just a just a thing to everyone else. If you say you're a fan of something but refuse to watch or the worst thing that comes out of that, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Like. I consider myself a Avatar The Last Airbender fan. Yes, I watched a horrible, shitty movie because I'm a fan of the show. I saw that in theaters. I, I embraced <laughs> I did, too. It was fucking terrible. Oh, it was hard. So, man. Like, like, oh, I heard it was so bad. I didn't do it. Well, you suck. You suck. <laughs> and Asha says, no sh- shy of slander will prosper. Exactly. I like Shia LaBeouf, so yeah. that's... Uh... Running from your life, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> okay, we. <laughs> oh man, that was, that, was the first time, that was the first time three B and I actually agreed on something. Yeah, that wow. That it took ten episodes. Ten episodes. Took ten episodes. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next topic. Um, Mandalorian uh, slash Disney Plus possibly coming to Game Pass. So. Um, some people are thinking this is a, the it could be a tease for the DLC of the new Star Wars game, or or maybe uh, what is it? For, what was the new Star Wars game that came out? My brain. Um, Squadrons. Squadrons. It could be DLC for that, or the other one with the Joker kid. Um, oh, 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 um, what, what's Fall in Order? What's this? Yeah, Fall in Order. Uh, so it could be a DLC for that game. They're thinking, or it's. Exactly what it sounds like. Disney Plus coming to Game Pass. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think it's cool? Do you guys think it sucks? Do you guys like Disney Plus? Do you hate Disney Plus? Do you, you want to do to make Disney Plus the overlord over Netflix? Do you want to drink Disney Plus water? What is what is your Disney Plus? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll drink Disney first. Plus. Wa- I'll drink Disney Plus water after I have some four bit loco. That doesn't exist. It will one day, but <laughs> I now in actuality, this might just be Disney Plus coming with Game Pass as part of a like little bonus, sort of like uh, how Country Wall was with uh, Game Pass for Funimation now. But I think in my uh, three-bit tin foil hat theory. That Disney's gonna buy Xbox because they watch this and they think, wow, 3 bit sure doesn't want Microsoft to buy a lot of things. Who does he think we fucking are? So Disney's like, yo, Xbox, we own you now. Fuck you. And then they buy that. And 3 bit's gonna be like, what? No, that sucks. And I'm like, this is what you get. This is what you fucking deserve. Wow. <laughs> It's <laughs> eating cakes. Go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna have to put my tinfoil hat on for this. <laughs> and I'm sorry if this somehow affects the uh, the YouTube channel, but go ahead. Um, die go here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if if it's just a combination of Disney Plus and X X Xbox Game Pass, like. I'm okay with it. I'm I'm not I'm not against it. I I have a I have Disney Plus for free through through Xfinity for a year because I think I just got Xfinity. Um, I I'm not on it too much. I mean I've seen all the Disney movies. I mean yeah. as an animator you, you you have to watch every damn Disney movie. But I am I am straight up not a fan of Disney as a company. I'm a fan of their movies and the people that create them. Um, but not the company. And if Disney buys out Xbox and or Game Pass, um, I'm I'm gonna be very very conflicted because I love Game Pass right now. I think it's I think it's the best thing. I think it's the the new thing for gaming, and they're doing it right. Um, yeah. I I think Disney tinfoil hat right now. I think Disney's trying to take over take over the entire world <laughs> in an evil evil fashion i know there's a bunch of jokes but i i 
I listen. I love listening to conspiracy theories. I love talking about them. I believe in about 0.1 percent of them, and the Disney one is the only 0.1 percent I actually believe in. <laughs> they so they they have literally stolen the hearts of children who are now grown up, and I well actually since the the 1930s. Uh, or yeah, 19, oh, I said that right. 1930s. They have literally stolen the hearts of every kid, and people defend Disney to their dying breath. I actually did it at school once. I said this this exact stuff to somebody at school, and they're just like, "No, no, no!" And I'm just like, "See, you're already defending." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's I like, thought I you... knew Disney until I went to my college, and I realized Dude. I knew nothing. Right? Dude, everybody at SCAD knows so much about Disney. Like, the weirdest one for me was when I started, I like randomly, I'll sing like random parts of songs. I don't know every Disney song. And then everybody will finish it. Like, they'll they'll finish the song from the part where I left off and they know all the words. I am not that good. (laughs) And that was creepy. They know every word to every song. Not just the words. They know how the characters were standing. They know, like, the timing of, like, the 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 moments of the words like if there's like a little pause and then the character like jumps on a table or something crazy craziness it's nutty <laughs> um I, um yeah so i want to see perspective on this mm-hmm. uh one of the reasons why and and I'll, I'll get into my own personal history for a bit but our college has had a lot of uh professors that used to work for disney so we have a bit of a wide knowledge and history and all the shady dealings that go on in there one of my favorites being was that aladdin almost had anime side face with a uh, favorite oh yeah uh, yeah no uh my it favorite, does. One, of, one of my favorite professors when he was going over uh character design for principles of 2d animation and he was gonna like go into character designs that he almost was about to say anime and for a lot of college professors they don't really like anime and this professor stops himself and he says it's like i'm gonna be completely real with y'all and he's a really tough like you know intimidating guy he says, i'm gonna be real with all y'all i fucking love anime anime is my goddamn shit <laughs> and, and he told that. everyone about he did say that no he only likes one of i know exactly who you're talking about and then he only likes one of them he only like and it's kira matter. he loves the kira he, no he posted little witch academia he is a weeb <laughs> <laughs> Octo is the best uh, girl. Anyway, actually, I still need to finish on, that. We got yeah. from that. Uh, when I was a young kid, uh, apparently I used to watch Fox and the Hound a million times over and over again. And why uh, would you watch that movie multiple times? You know how sad that movie kid, is. That movie is I was a young sad. Kid, I movie was stuck in a time loop because the characters looked exactly the same when they grew up. And I thought it was like stuck in a continuous loop. I didn't know that much as a kid until I watched it like in my last year of high school. I was like, oh, oh okay. But uh, for a while, I was an anti-Disney fan because I didn't like the way their VHS box arts looked. I didn't really like the uh, bubbly <laughs> musicals or just any of that. I was, I was like, this seems fake. And then once I kind of fell and like got into animation and watched uh, the Great Mouse Detective, I was like, "Oh, this is cool! Wait, this is Disney? Ha! Huh. Let me look into this further." And I was being very open about Disney, just being like, "Oh, this is cool! Oh, wow! What, oh, what is Disney. that effect? It's animation. What does but that then, effect? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Say. Oh no, I'm, I'm not done. I'm not done yet. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> this is my show. Solid. That's good. This is my fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I go into college and just like uh, kind of I go to the animation history class and they go over Disney and it just uh, it is funny because like it's around the time I was like oh Wreck-It Ralph came out and, like obviously you can't like I know Pixar is a thing but you don't ever really count Pixar with Disney I'm sorry you just you just don't but then like you know oh things are going good and then I go to animation history and I'm like oh wow Disney's still doing some bullshit maybe i was right as a child i just didn't think about it bigger so uh as air insane cakes i cakes. almost just come cakes man okay okay you're you're somewhat insane 
but I guess I'll call you cakes. Always, always. Uh, it's <laughs> like I love, um, you know, I appreciate the movies. You know, the people that make them, they spend their like hearts and souls into their uh, movies. In fact, they even have a movie called Heart and Soul, or is that just Soul? I can't remember. It's going on Disney Plus. So anyway, <laughs> okay. I actually got a friend of mine who's worked on that, but uh, anyway, uh, uh, you know, I appreciate all that, but Disney does some shady shit, including buying off a bunch of companies and doing all that shit with it. So uh, I'm just kind of hoping that with 3-Bit having over 10 episodes of uh, going into how Xbox is going to be buying cap it's like, man, I can't wait for them to buy them. It's only a matter of time when Disney buys Xbox, and that is when you'll finally understand true fucking pain. I'm, I'm canceling this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised they don't have their own system already. <laughs> I was, I was surprised Disney and Vanity like uh, got canceled. I thought that was doing really well. So, I will say though, they do own. They do have one of my favorite game series of all times, and that's uh, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Oh, true. Is that mostly Square Enix thing? Though? I mean, it's Square it Enix, is mostly but, yeah. Square Enix, but you know Disney's getting a huge chunk of that money. Yeah, if not giving them money at the same time. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, th- this whole thing reminds me of like the Mandela effect. And if you guys <laughs> don't know what that means. Yeah. Oh, it's, I know what that means. Yeah, it's like the conspiracy theory thing where there's proof of an alternate universe. Dude, I've had so many Mandela effect moments. That it has to be real. First off, the the Chick Fil A logo is is one. Okay, I remember. I remember Chick Fil A did not have a K in it. It just said C H I C Fillet. Okay, that I lived no, in. I... Listen, I lived in that timeline. Wrong. I am in the wrong timeline. That's wrong. <laughs> You're just straight up wrong. You're not going to talk about the Bernstein bears or the Bernstein. Oh yeah, Listen, I'm in the wrong timeline. That's all I'll say. I don't. I, I don't belong like here. The, uh, I still like the. Uh, what was it the uh, Shazam? Was it the Shazam one? Yeah. With Sinbad, and he actually did a he did a spoof off of it because people kept thinking. That's a big one. That was I crazy. Like how I messed with everybody. <laughs> I just found out one where apparently people thought it was either the Flint Stones or the Flynn Stones. Yeah, and that's it, like, isn't, isn't it Flint Stones? I thought it was always Flint Stones. No, Flint Stones. No, it's Flint Stones. Flint Flynn Stones? Are you saying Flynn or Flint? I, it's always been Flint Stones. Listen. No, it hasn't. You go. <laughs> Which one sounds more natural? Flintstones or Flintstones? It's Flintstones because it's a rock pun! <laughs> that is the point! <laughs> oh man. This is a great episode so far. We are going completely off topic. Um, Alright, so. Oh, wait, I, I didn't even say what I thought about Disney Plus. First off, um, <clears throat> I gotta prepare myself. Disney Plus, uh, to me, is when it first launched, it, it was terrible. Um, like it would have loading problems, uh, especially on different platforms. And it would only work on my TV, on my PC, uh, at different places. I would go to different people's houses having the same issue. Um, of the the you pressing play on movies and then it will play for a bit and just stop uh it's it seems to be a little bit better now uh, but in terms of like the content i usually just cancel disney plus until mandalorian comes out um yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, I just wait for mandalorian to come out i i which it is, so I reenacted my Disney Plus, and as soon as it's done, guess what I'm doing? I am canceling. Honestly, like, uh, I mean, honestly, like, uh, Mandalorian is worth it for the price of admission. To be honest, it's so, so good. Uh, it is so good. Really? Yeah, yeah, so good. I haven't watched it. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. 
I'm gonna make it the armor. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and buy one, save up and buy one of those uh, replica helmets that are made from the molds, and I'm gonna build an armor. I want to do. I want to wear, so wear Boba Fett's armor like Cobb. That's what I want to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, I think it, it this does add value to Game Pass, and it's a, it'll be crazy if it's still fifteen bucks. Like what in the world? That's that's a good deal. Um. All right, so uh, d- did you guys have the opportunity to see Watch Dogs, gameplay of, of Watch Dogs uh, with ray tracing? Yeah. You did? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, no one, yes. Yeah, uh, click on the video and see what you what you uh, can. Um, actually, I'll put the, the video up on the, on the, the live chat. stream. Because we... Other people it with us. Yeah, we do things live here. Um, Add more minutes to man. the thing, and I don't see any difference. I was actually watching, um, what was it, Shroud? I think Shroud was playing it. Um, he was playing mostly during the daytime, though, so you, you, I feel like you notice it like a lot better at nighttime, like the like the video you're showing. Um, yeah. Yeah, nighttime does look really, really beautiful. Like it, it loads perfectly. Daytime, it's a little bit easier to render because you only got to worry about like one big main light. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, nighttime is when you have like all the other lights going on, and it it looks it looked absolutely beautiful. So I like it. I noticed a difference. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah. If this is like just a hint of what cyberpunk is going to look like, I'm a, I'm very excited. Um, if that'll yeah. ever come out, which oh, I got will. some. Uh, oh man, that's a topic. Freaking yeah. cyberpunk. That's a topic. That's a topic. We gotta put that in there. That's a topic. That, that is a topic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are running through these pretty quick. This is like, like we're almost at the end. This is the, this is gonna be the shortest <laughs> podcast we'll have. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like, what are your thoughts on it? I don't see anything. But you know what? Like okay, All right, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Just be like, what do you guys think about it? It's cool. All right, next topic. Okay. All right. <laughs> Rolling through them tonight. Oh, man. Um, yeah, ray tracing to me, it's it's like the, you know, it's the new the new kid on the block, the new the new thing. Like, remember in Fable um, where the bloom effect was big back in those days? You had that bloom oh, effect. God, on, like, I fucking bloom. I know everyone hates bloom, but... <laughs> I love me some bloom. <laughs> this feels it's to like me bloom, like that. From from out back, the bloom, the blooming onion. The, the, remember that? The blooming, the blooming. I onion. actually hate. I hate that. I hate that restaurant. Eric, you can get out right the fuck now. <laughs> I made cake. You know what's? You want to know what's funny? You know what's funny is uh, they give free blooming onions to um. Uh, for, to veterans uh, in a couple of days on November 11th, so I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna order one for free and not eat it just for you. What a way to atone <laughs> for your fucking sins! Oh man, this is good. this is going south. <laughs> this is the episode where we all break up. Oh like, man, this is <laughs> like oh the blue I, I fucking hate it. <laughs> I'm three bit, and I'm too. I'm here to announce that this will be the final episode of the VGHD <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, the ray tracing it, it it reminds me of Bloom, the Bloom effect. Um, I think it's really impressive. Like the reflections, like especially when you walk by the car. Like if you see this player go by the car, you'll see like the actual reflections of stuff and it's really weird because we haven't really had that in game we have like fake uh what they call baked cube reflections and uh i don't know it's it's just it's just cool you know glad to have it i'm I'm all good like the puddles very useful yeah um but ray tracing people don't know that ray tracing is not just reflections that's the more obvious part of ray tracing it also can help with light bounces so it can make light itself be more accurate. So, um, in rendering, it makes it like for for those of you who don't know, in rendering in three D, it it really makes it so much easier on the console and harder at the same time in a different way. But yeah. um, uh, it it makes it so much better for the 
for the uh, any game engine that uses it, it makes it just so much easier. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad that uh, I don't know if Cyberpunk was announced to have. I know Cyberpunk is going to have a next gen patch. Um, I don't know if that includes ray tracing. I'm sure it does. Um, but dang, Cyberpunk is going to look beautiful whenever it comes out, if it actually exists. Like the PlayStation Five doesn't exist. You know. It's like oh, that that it exists now, oh. baby. Ah man, that, that again. <laughs> Oh, three bit conspiracy theory. Oh man. man. So yeah, um, you're living yeah. in the timeline where the PS5 exists. Come on. <laughs> For a while, I was I was convinced. Uh, I had my my tin tin hat. Was it tin foil hat? I didn't think that this life was real. Like, cause there's no foot footage or photos of people holding. It's like, how do we even know if it's real? But you know what? I was right because are we no, real? Are we even real? You know? Get the fuck out of here, Jaden. <laughs> I mean, we could be in a simulation and, you know, the, uh, we are the PS5 trapped. is just not running great because uh, the simulation is, you know, glitching out right now. Yeah, we, we're, I don't even know if we are real. We're trapped in some weird 2020 simulation. That yeah. Someone unplugged yeah. some wires for 2020. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, still like, I still like the angel memes where God's just like, did you set up all the all the events for the 2020s? And the machine's just like, I'm sorry, you mean pl- you said plural? <laughs> like you put that all in one year. <laughs> oh man, interesting, interesting this is, year. This is the longest. This so, is the longest year ever. Like we're, almost, we're almost there. We are almost very close. Where, uh... Um, where uh, Aubrey Plaza has like all the days scheduled to like the thirtieth for uh, Ron Swanson, and it's like you scheduled all my events on that day, and she's like, I didn't know the thirtieth, I didn't know Thursdays were real, and he has to go through all the meetings in one day. So <laughs> that was like, oh man, great episode. Um, yeah. So also the Series S version, to me, is amazing. It. The Series S version has ray tracing too, um, so you can get ray tracing for three hundred bucks, which you cannot do on the PC. So that's freaking awesome. <laughs> to me, that's freaking awesome. If you want to buy like a cheap, super cheap console for your family or friends, uh, and you want that that's that ray tracing gloriousness, uh, Series S can do it. So that's, that's very sweet of you, but that's very nice. Yeah. Such a silly thing. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. To the next topic. Resident <laughs> Evil 8. And oh. PT. And then the Konami. Uh, uh, so we're going to talk about Resident Evil 8. Um, and uh, basically, um, they're going to kind of explain Chris and Ethan. Um, I think it's sort of deriving from the Resident Evil 7 DLC. Um but apparently, it's rumored that Chris uh, is Red- Chris Redfield is the antagonist in the game, so you might be facing him as the villain, um, or it could be like a fake out. But I think that would be pretty interesting. It's gonna be a fake out. Yeah, you think it's, it's fake out? Oh yeah, come on, he's a, he's a he's a favorited main character. It's, uh... it's gonna be. It's gonna be one of two fake outs. Sorry, sorry. Well, <laughs> it's gonna be one of two fake outs. It's either he's doing it for some better reason than we already know, or B, it's not actually him. It's just somebody who looks like him. And I, I kind of hate both of those. But <laughs> versus the Rock and Fast and Furious. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> They're breaking up. What's gonna happen next? And they yeah. buff each other's chests up, and they just like almost kiss, but they don't. And moving on from that, uh, yeah, Resident <laughs> Evil 8, how's, what's going on with that? Uh, I did play the DLC, though. Um, I don't remember anything with uh, Chris and Ethan. I know that there's a Chris DLC which came out for free as a release way later. Uh, I also know that there was the uh, the girl who's, um, I forgot her name, but she's the one that kind of talks to you through the phone. You need to play as her little yep. story right before her family gets infected hey and then and i have a theory oh boy. hey worse go like Triple this go like this uh where's <laughs> do, do it for a long time <laughs> yeah i thought 
thought I thought that would take out the the robotness, which I think it did. I think my theory has been confirmed. We need uh, to figure out how. how whoa! It worked. Things were. It did worked. it? Yeah. So I make the no. boob sound. Oh, never mind. I, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> one day it'll work. Oh, one day. Um. We had that backup idea that we won't tell you, and you're gonna have to figure it out yourselves when you make your own podcast. Yeah. And just secrets, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Resident mm. Evil Eight. Look, it looks uh, awesome. Uh, werewolves and all that. Now yeah, I'm down for it. Um, I think it's gonna be the best one. I like. I, so uh, I like the piece of the merchant. <laughs> you want to buy something? I want to buy I the full bit. Four. I love four, but this this one eight looks amazing. What do yeah. you think about the rumors of a Resident Evil Four remake? Wait, mm. they're do, they're doing a remake of four. It's been that's There's been rumored, rumored for a while, dude. What do you think about that, Kate? Dude, I'm gonna I'm dude. Oh my god, I'm gonna be the happiest man alive if if they do a remake of four. Four was so good. Four was like seriously my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, a lot of people love two. You know what? We're you, you are now the 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 new host. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right, you you start introducing what the next topics. What what we got? You are now. I am worse now. You may send me pigeons. Uh, okay, so. uh well, that's a very interesting thing right here. So, uh, Microsoft, Red Microsoft, Red Microsoft. Red Microsoft's Red awesome. Chris <laughs> Redfield. Now, I didn't think about that, but we'll see when I play it on my Xbox Game Pass, owned by Walt Disney Studios. So, uh, PlayStation is the best. Anyway, next up. We have uh, P.E.T. and Konami. Now, obviously, this shows uh, the faulty infrastructure of Sony, but <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, the horses. You, you jumped way to conclusions there. So um, it turns out that uh, before P.E.T. was on the PS4, it got removed, because of a dispute between Konami and Kojima, which would eventually lead to the cancellation of Silent Hills, which is a collaboration between Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, and Junji Ito. Yeah. And this would eventually cause a downfall of the public reception of Konami, more so than it already had been. But when the PS5 was revealed to have a list of backwards compatible games that weren't going to be playable on the PS5, people were surprised that, oh, wait, can I play PT from my PS4 that wasn't deleted off of there and play it on my PS5? And Konami originally said, no, you can't play it because we removed it from the store. And in one of the first reviews of the system from Polygon, a Polygon editor, or Polygon or Kotaku, I can't remember which, the Sony's <laughs> systems all just look the same to me. There's no improvements. Anyway, uh... <laughs> It turns out that they use PT to test out the backwards compatible features of the PS5, and it worked up until Konami contacted Sony and requested them to take it down, and mm. including so as to instead of being able to transfer it from your hard drive like you would with your other PS4 games, it cannot be transferred over, nor can it be played on there. So <laughs> obviously. A lot of people are thinking this is Konami's fault, but the real thing is, is that Sony are just wimps, and it's all their fault. Anyway, yeah. what do you guys think about this so uh, far? Can, can, can I can I pitch in here? Think, boys, go right ahead, you silly goose. All right. Well, I think we all should just come together, and it's all about the games. All right. So. PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, it doesn't matter, because in the end, what really matters, you guys, <laughs> is coming together, and going Ooh. against Konami, that's what we should all do. There you go. Me teared up a little. Yeah, One yeah. of our comments right now. Uh, 
I'm, I'm getting to my YouTube in a second where it's held on one second. Uh, nothing's <laughs> come up, but I'll be sure to check out my Twitter. Also, be sure to uh, DM me on Twitter instead of typing the comments in there. That'll be really helpful later on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, man. This is a weird episode. <laughs> what is this happening? Is very weird episode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was I was going with it. I wasn't sure how long, how long <laughs> we were gonna go. For. We're just pre character already. Okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're good. Um, yeah, I even know what we're gonna say. <laughs> Resident Evil. Uh, was saying cakes. What do you think about it? I, I well, I mean, I already talked about it. I think Resident Evil Eight is gonna be awesome. So, oh, I mean, I mean, yeah. Konami. Sorry, Konami. Uh, oh, Konami. I'm PT. Yeah. Do you know about what's what's going on? So basically, PlayStation Five uh, is cutting off support. It's mostly Konami. Konami is cutting off support for yeah, yeah. PT. It's kind of sad. Like, why? Why? <laughs> why do this? You know. You're you're just saying all that perfectly there. And as gamers, we need to stand up and go against Konami. Yeah, exactly. That's what I. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Let's yeah. all go to Konami's headquarters and tell them to. Give me Metal Gear Solid and let's march to Hideo Kojima and then give it to him and then be like, good luck, and then we walk away. You don't oh. remember the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake with the Fox engine, do you? What? Oh, oh I have heard of this. Oh, okay, wait, wait. So... Is it. Oh, wait. Is, isn't this the, the Pachinko thingy? It is a Pachinko machine. Oh, no. They remade Metal Gear Solid 3. In the Fox engine, but you can only play it through the pachinko machines, and it's all just the catch things. Fuck. Oh, three was my favorite, aside from five. Oh, three is like everyone's favorite game, but uh, no, you got to pachinko that up, including Silent Hill and Bomberman. They're just a pachinko company now. Who gives a fuck about video games? Am I right, my gamers? Haha. <laughs> That's where they, well, they, in their, in their, in their defense, that is where they make their money, and honestly, you kind of, with a big enough company like that, you have to go where the money is. As much as I fucking hate, so, excuse me. As much as I hate saying that. <laughs> what are you? Listen, I'm a huge Jeez, Metal Gear Solid fan. Lot, like three bit. Now. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just very, I'm very mad with, with Konami still oh, over all that, oh, which. I, Actually, you were talking about Junji Junji Ito before. I actually just found out. Sadly, I'm a huge horror fan, and I just found out who he was like at the beginning of this year, like back in like January. I found out who he was, and I read a lot of his stuff. Um, because he, oh, yeah. he was. Uh, oh my god! Much detail about Junji Ito just now, dude. He Junji Ito, like that stuff is awesome. I have yet to see the 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 movie that was made on it because I heard it wasn't that great, but. Um, um, There's the animated series Uzumaki, which I think you're going yes. to probably like mm. a lot. It has a I need to watch that. Yeah, that's what I, I, I saw. That, that I think that's what got me into it, was I saw that, and I was just like, they're making an anime. I have no idea who this is, and I was looking into that. And his stuff is absolutely beautiful. Like, if if any of you don't know who Junji Ito is, check out his his manga. Check out who he is. Is absolutely phenomenal. The, the most famous one is the spiral one. I can't remember the name of it. Was the spiral? <laughs> um, Uzumaki. Uzumaki. That's what it is. Uzumaki. Yeah. Why, that that one is the favorite one, my, uh, or most people's favorite. My my favorite one. Uh, I, I again can't remember the name of it. Um, <laughs> the one where people have like their own cutouts in this wall, and like they're all like wanting to go to the wall. What's that? One? It's all the <laughs> Which one? <laughs> that, that, my God. Like, this is in my shape. It is my hole. I belong yeah. here. Yeah. Don't go in there. Yeah, that one is probably my favorite concept of all time. That because I'm claustrophobic. I have I get panic attacks, dude. I can't sleep on my back because I'm afraid. Like. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to get really deep right here. I'm Good afraid work. to sleep on my back because uh, I, I'm afraid of waking up in a coffin. It's it's really weird. Oh, I'm, man. My, That's my like my that biggest movie fear. with Ryan Reynolds. That movie. Dude, don't stop, stop. 
because uh, <laughs> that um there's a uh, there's a part in gotham where jim gordon gets stuck underground and i recently watched um as above so below and i actually had a panic attack i'm gonna watching that um i actually thought it was a decent movie but i had a panic attack because they got really claustrophobic for me. <laughs> it was ooh, not a good time but yeah. i'll still watch all those movies oh man yeah i i don't i'm not a horror movie person uh i have to be forced to watch it if it has a good story, I'll watch it. Like I, I, feel, like, I feel like a lot of horror movies have terrible stories. Um, it. Um, ha- ooh, ooh. That's because you watch the terrible ones. Yeah, you watch the terrible the one, ones. Uh, yeah, the ones I've seen. You, you, like, you, you watch them. I'm, I'm gonna get. To, I'm gonna make fun of you right now. I'm sorry because I'm passionate about this. You watch the ones that are like either like very indie schlock, or mm. the ones that are just like, uh, oh, here's a blood and gore. Here's a massacre going on. I'm just like ah. <laughs> yeah yeah i do i that's the thing i i do it's like um for for the most part like when i watched like it like i love it the story was like great uh and then which it which it oh. i like i like the old ones and the new ones okay. I like both. well i i didn't like part two of the new one the part one was awesome part two was it was okay yeah, I like but both. the original I was like everyone kept saying with it, regardless of like the movies or both, that the part where they're all kids and just like kind of going through like the Pennywise for the first time is much better than when they're adults. So when everyone kept saying that, regardless of like the movies or the books, it was like, okay, I got my expectations tampered, or at least I got those set down a bit. But I still like both of them. I think they complement well with each other. Uh, but no, have you watched uh, Hereditary or Midsommar? Or, uh, I haven't seen Hereditary. Which watch hereditary actually Ooh. i heard i heard nothing but good things i'm just not a horror movie well, person. i don't know if which have you seen the shining um yes i've seen that a long time ago though um when i was like a kid <laughs> i seen the shining i can't even remember well uh, would, re- uh, rewatch it say... sorry sorry no, no, i was gonna say uh for horror in particular, because I wasn't a fan of it originally, but I started to get into it the more I looked at it from a production perspective and just thinking, like, how can we get this lighting to work right here? What can we do with the budget? Because a lot of horror movies, or at least horror movie directors, get their start from doing, uh, like, little tiny budgeted movies. And then if they're making good enough success from that, then they get to go with the uh, bigger movies because uh, industry people will be like, oh, yeah. he can make some convincing shots with a uh, magnifying glass and a potato soup, give him $60 billion to have him do Spider-Man. Well, well, what's smart about horror movies, and this will be the last topic because we are totally off topic. Um, no, in terms of <laughs> horror movies, um, it's really smart for the movie industry to do horror movies because they can, let's say their budget is like $100 million or something. It's usually not that expensive to do horror movies but they usually turn a big profit so um movie studios they love horror movies and then they love the big blockbuster movies so usually what you see in movies now is either big movies or or uh horror movies and before if you looked at like uh studios like uh what's the lion like mgm um, if you look at the the amount of movies they used to make in like the '90s or '80s or even further, um, and you compare it to now, movies can make like the same amount of money for just like three movies now. Uh, and back in like the '70s and '80s, whatever, they used to make like a hundred movies a year. Um, now it's like maybe three, four, five. Anything with a rock. Um, so that's that's how how we're moving luckily you know you have other studios like a24 and uh, some other amazing studios that are not just making the big blocks buster movies but movies where you know story and character are very big and and um oh man i sound like such a movie critic but (laughs) <laughs> we're now we're now doing movies along with video games. Uh, this is a really we are now thing. we are now movie games pod well, podcast. Oh. Well, you you were mentioned. Actually, I didn't think horror movies. Actually, what do you want, dog? You're whining. It's 
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't think horror movies actually made that much money because the weird thing is, if you actually look at like, well, I normally don't follow critics. I, I'll rather watch a movie for myself unless uh, certain friends I'll listen to a movie movie suggestions. Um, horror Jones movies. It's, no, not nope. That well, that's nope. Nope, not Indiana Jones 4. <laughs> um, most most horror movies actually get really bad reviews. Like, if you look... But people like, love even, to watch them. The reviews, oh, like, don't I, I, Yeah, I know. That's, like, the weirdest thing. Is like, the reviews don't really don't matter for horror movies, but they always get, like, terrible reviews on, like, Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's hard to find a good horror movie that's above, um, like, 80... 80 tomatoes. I think it's really difficult to find a horror movie that's yeah, above for, that. For example, I, I'm, I'm looking at this article low-budget horror movies that killed it at the box office. Paranormal Activities oh, budget on. was $15,000. And hold on. it made $100 million. Um, Hold up. Oh, the, the, so the, I, have, I have a huge, huge huge problem with, with Paranormal Activity. I actually love the movie. I think it's a great movie. But it's not really that great with horror. Um, cause they only rely on one type of scare and it's the pop scare and they abuse the ever loving crap out of it. And they use one, te- they use one technique and then they just abuse it in different ways and mask it. I feel like and I'm then gonna... it got really popular, but I do love the movie. I really want to get into, I actually have like, uh, like I want to debate about the legitimacy of jump scares cause I know people kind of complain about them, but I also know there's like the anticipation and release of it but anyway i think that might be for no no, no. we can tackle this right now because <laughs> because i'm sorry i i i'm research i've done a lot of research on horror stuff and actual scaring stuff especially for what i'm writing right now um I'm, I'm but it's that, it's uh... no no i'm not saying there's anything wrong with with jump scares there there isn't like you can effectively use jump scares but the fact that a lot of the more noticeable movies like Paranormal Activity and um, uh, what was the last yeah. one? You have a couple um, more. They, they they abuse the crap out of the jump scares, but you can use them effectively. Like there's there's a few different YouTube people that I watch that are like they'll give out so many different examples. Like um, the Halloween movies do them effectively. They don't do them quite uh, quite as often, but they use them in very strategic points in the story to to build the horror and not the main part of the horror and that's the difference all right yeah sorry i, I, <laughs> I could go i could go really into horror movies and the strategic no pieces. yeah so so in terms of like the budget um i know i'll just end on this with the horror movies uh like there i'm looking at this article um and it's it's saying um low budget movies that killed it in the box office paranormal activity only spent Fifteen thousand dollars and got a hundred million. Uh, Blair Witch Project uh, budget was sixty thousand. The box office it got two hundred forty-eight million. Um, Night of the Living Dead, another one, a hundred thousand, got thirty million. Yeah. So my my whole point is, <clears throat> the studios love horror movies because they can make it for such a small amount. Because you know, it, it, you just have to really play with the lighting. Um, it, and it's like the limited the limited factor can be scary for people like if it's just on a camera you know or if it's just in like one room that can be re- scary for a lot of people which means it's like a lower budget um so a lot of movie studios like that um it, it i'm sure it was a higher budget that had a lot of special effects and stuff like that um but yeah that <laughs> that is it for hey, horror movies did. unless you guys I mean, last weekend was- Halloween, and I don't think we had an episode last week, so... Uh, true, true. This is... Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, um, so that is it for this episode. Kind of a short episode. Uh, let's make up for it next next uh, episode. We'll have, like, a, maybe some special things, especially since the new consoles are coming out, so I'll talk about my impressions on it with on the podcast. We have a couple of more videos gonna, coming up. Yeah, go we're going to go over to 3Bits Place with Quarantine outfits to play the PS5. <laughs> and the Series X. And, no, uh, and, no, just and my, and, 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 and my Series S. No, As no. I said before, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, it doesn't matter. We gamers eat guys up. Oh, that's <laughs> the... I'll be fair on that. 
like three bid was the very informative uh, take on Drew Gito. <laughs> Well, we got a lot of videos coming up. Uh, there might be one posted tomorrow, so look out for that. It's a part two to the studio acquisition video, which is doing very well. So thank you guys for supporting that. Um, How our... you make it do so well? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> and our last podcast is starting to get a lot of views. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, We hit 200, so... 208 subscribers. Oh, we didn't do a party. Damn it. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys for subscribing and, and all that. It, it really means a lot to us. It, it motivates us to keep this going. So uh, thank you guys for that. So more animations case. in the future. <clears throat> yeah, more more animations in the future for sure. Um, like right now, we have the 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 four bit energy drink. We have the the Abbey drink one, which is one of my favorites. We have the the one worst made where it's like the uh, Master Chief going into the outer space. So we have a couple. Uh, we got copyright striked for the last one, so I can't use that one. What? Yeah, Did but... we really? I told you. I, 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 I said it. Copyright strike like, for Walter? I for, freaking... For, uh, no. For the Miranda Cosgrove one. Uh, oh! I told you. I told you. I was just like, we're going to be hit did. with a copyright strike. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, oh, it's all good. We're not super big yet. Um... It's it's not really a strike though. That's, we will that, that's, be. That's not a strike. We will have that's... Miranda Cosgrove come by as a host, and she will say, "I want to leave." That's not really like a strike though. That's just that it it just mutes it though, right? Or was um, an actual full strike? I, I I'll double check, but uh, it doesn't I'm, look good. I'm, I just sign me up for the show. Well, because you you only get like three strikes for an account or something if, like if, that. If if it's a strike strike, then uh, totally worth it. I would do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. I don't think it is. It's I think it's just a muted because I've done the muted thing before and I don't get strikes against it. Okay. Well, unless, unless not, it gets big, unless the video gets big, but I'm that, not even going to mute worry. it. You guys go ahead and enjoy that video. Uh, we're probably not going to do that again. <laughs> so go ahead and enjoy that. Uh, it's basically Miranda Cosgrove singing, and uh, I put my my logo on her face and uh, was like acting like a little fanboy. So <laughs> you were. <laughs> so yeah, let's are, so a little fanboy three bit. Yeah, a little oh, fanboy three bit. So let's let's close out. Um, insane kicks. Where can we follow you? All that different stuff. Um, apparently a lot of my stuff is down. Aside from my Instagram, which is at the insane cakes. Um, I'm posting mostly my schoolwork right now. I'm once this quarter ends, which is next Sunday for me for school. I'm gonna be getting back into making videos and streaming and all of that stuff both on facebook twitch and youtube and you'll catch me doing some pretty sweet animations i got some stuff lined up like i will be finishing a um sylvanas versus an orc from world of warcraft animation and then i really want to do skateboarding animation really bad so that's very, very cool so um worse should we blow dart into your neck with a message inside of your veins. Uh, you could do that, or actually, you could follow me. <laughs> oh, <man>. um, <laughs> that was some perfect timing. That, that was ever seen. It. <laughs> that was great time. So that's how you guys <laughs> will follow worst. Um, last time it was a pigeon. You know, we sent frisbees. Uh, so that's how you guys will follow worse. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching the VGHD podcast. Uh, we're going to end it with our sponsor video, but thank you guys. Make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe. So here we go with our sponsor. Take it away. Thanks, Other 3-Bit. You ever wonder how I make such awesome Netflix videos right here on the VGHD set? Well, there is a secret. It's because I taste the 4-Bit energy drink. I can't be 3-Bit without my four. This product does not actually exist. If it does exist, you can't have it because you're not 3-Bit. Actually, I changed my mind. It does exist. If you subscribe to the video game 